Hello and welcome to Plus Back. Today I'm going to be unpacking the greenhouse, taking out all of the tropical plants and the tender plants I've been overwintering and I hope that they've all survived. And to prove the point that it's time to get the tropical plants out, I'm even wearing my tropical shirt. Keep watching. I'm going to start with all of the smaller pots and I'll try and find some space in the barn here to bring them out into a bit brighter light and slightly cooler conditions than have been inside the greenhouse and then eventually they'll make their way outside into the fresh air. Most of the plants I'm going to be bringing out today will need repotting. But I'm not going to worry about that just now. Today it's just about getting the plants out into the open air and hopefully getting them ready for the big wide world. Let's see what we've got. First up we have these trilliums and they don't really need uh, winter protection to be honest but because I planted them bare rooted I just wanted to be extra sure that they'd make it through but yeah they're going to be happy enough I think they don't even need replanting they do like shady conditions though so I'm going to be careful not to put them in the bright sun next up is a very sad dahlia which uh it sent up one spindly shoot that died and I'm not entirely sure that there's much in there that's going to send out new growth uh, we'll see. I'll put it in the dead or dying. Blah. I'll put it in the dead or dying pile. This isn't the best of starts, is it? Lots of things uh, heading for the uh, potential compost heap in the sky, and this actually stinks. If I'm honest with you, um, this. Oh, I'll just put it over there. This my distance was a banana and an ensete banana and it was beautiful last year stunning got really big then i dug it up and brought it inside thinking i overwinter it inside because the previous year i had but the difference being it had been in a pot all the summer the year before last and so it was just lift the pot bring it inside this year when i well last year when i dug it up I don't think it liked being moved that way and then put in a pot and then put in really unfriendly conditions for it. So it's when well, it sulked and then it got completely infested by white fly, fly, green fly, aphids of all varieties. And then I had enough. I kind of got sick of seeing it looking so, so sorry for itself. And I thought, well, I'll just pop it in the greenhouse and out the way yeah it really didn't like that so the top I'm, I'm gonna put gloves on for this hold on i'm back so the top has completely rotted away and is what is stinking i'm going to put it in a bag that was really quite unpleasant now I'd like to say that I'm hopeful that there'll be a firm root system underneath that would send up little pups, little offspring of tiny baby bananas around the centre where it's died back. <sighs> Not so sure that that's going to be the case. Let's have a look. Well, the top part is mush. Right, let's kind of, I'm going to just dig out around the edges. Well, it's not entirely squishy down below. So I'll put it in the dead or dying pile and hope for the best. Another plant that I had indoors over winter and kind of got a little bit sick of seeing it look so sad 
And that is this Colocasia Fontanese. And it is lovely when it's happy. And hopefully it'll be happy again one day. Although that's looking a little bit manky and squishy. Um, but yeah, so sorry for itself now. We'll take it out, give it a little bit of light and see if it bounces back. Things aren't getting any better. This is a uh, Greek mountain tea. Sideritis syriaca. It just looks dead. It might bounce back. You know where this one's going. Okay, a Brugmansia, Brugmansia Suaviolens. And although it doesn't have any leaves on it, it's green and pretty healthy and it will bounce back. Just going to check to see if there are any slugs underneath. It does look like it's been nibbled, but yeah, no, nope, I think we'll be okay with that one. Right, into the light. Now this one is a particular favourite of mine, Indigofera pendula and it's got lovely racemes of flowers that hang down and um yeah no it's beautiful um at the moment it looks like a pile of twigs but there is life uh just here there's a tiny little leaf and uh i think there's a few buds appearing as well so this one should soon come back from the dead a couple of saracena here and Again, they don't strictly need to be kept in a greenhouse over winter, but um, they were quite small and I have lost one or two in, in a, when we've had a hard winter. So I was erring on the side of caution and yep, they've made it through. Some of them are looking a little bit tatty, but you can just cut those off and then the new growth will come through and will look lovely. Oh, yeah, this one is called uh, the Seven Suns Tree. And uh, yeah, I, I took this from a cutting and really pleased it's made it through. And <laughs> another one that didn't need to be kept in the greenhouse. And I know that for sure, as I took two cuttings and I put one inside for security, left the other outside and both are doing fine. Aha. Uh -huh. Fatsia green fingers and this is a lovely fatsia because it's got very thin leaves it needs a good water actually it's quite dry but yeah no problems with that and again this doesn't really need to be in the greenhouse either um first year just being a bit cautious because it wasn't cheap a euonymus called sparkling burgundy and yeah, this one, if it's the one I'm thinking of, yeah, this one has lovely purple leaves, even though they're coming up as green now. Um, I say lovely, they're a bit scraggly, and it's never flowered for me as yet. I've tried it in pots, and I've tried it in the ground, and I've never quite got it looking happy or getting to a stage where it will produce the lovely flowers. And the flowers on Euonymus are wonderful. They're like little... Um, what are they called? Uh, pineapples and covered in flowers all the way around. And the only downside is they are pollinated by flies. And so wherever you have them, you can kind of end up with flies buzzing around you. But the, the flowers are so glorious that they are worth it. Another Colocasia here, and this is actually the edible variety. Um, it's called taro, and it's a lovely vegetable if you haven't tried it. I don't think this is ever going to get to a size where I can harvest it, although you never know. Once I get a polytunnel built and maybe can pop some in there, it'd be great if I could. But for now, it's a lovely little uh, ornamental plant. Okay, now we're on to the citrus. This is a, a limequat um, and uh, it's a cross between a kumquat and a lime, I believe. And um, I'll fact check that. But uh, yeah, it's made it through. It's got some healthy leaves on it. Uh, a couple of little bits have died back, but I can cut those off. But yeah, this will be very happy to be in the sunshine. Okay, Agapanthus 
queen mum. I think I've said this before, but a uh, naff name for an absolutely stunning plant. The flowers on it are glorious, they're huge, and the plant itself gets to a massive size. <sighs> it's made it through, I'm happy with that. It's looking a bit tatty, but it will bounce back. I'm saying that a lot. I have faith that all my plants will bounce back. Here I have a fuchsia, fuchsia trifilla. And it's not like your standard fuchsia, which have the dangling flowers with which look like little skirts. This one, the flowers are a little bit more impactful. And yeah, I do like this one. It hasn't flowered with me every year, but hopefully this year will be the year. Another Brugmansia that's looking like a twig, but, oh, let me have a take my glasses off to see. Yeah, I think there's some signs of growth down at the base. So, yeah, hopefully with a bit of light and TLC that will bounce back. Great Equisetum. And, uh, yeah, that'll be really happy out in the fresh air. Couple for the uh, dead or dying pile. Okay. Oh, that was a, uh, a chili pepper. And I'm always reluctant to uh, throw away chili peppers because you can overwinter them. I've tried inside and they just get covered in bugs. So I tend to just pop them in the greenhouse on the off chance that they make it through. Some years I have had some make it through. Most of the time they end up as twigs. And this one here is, oh, it's an Agni Moline Kapow. And yeah, it's not looking happy at all. Hmm. Yeah, the leaves are all dead and brittle. Well, I'll put it in the dead or dying pile and we'll see. I'm not even going to bother telling you about these. Dead or dying. A ginger here. Uh, I think this one's greeny eye, and these are just taken from the big plant I've got in the back there, which you will see at some point if I make it through to getting all these plants out. But yeah, this is um, a lovely one. It's got these great green leaves and red stems, and uh, I think there's a few different ones in there that I could pot up. But yeah, happy out in the daylight. I'm really pleased this has survived. It's a jujube, which is a type of fruit. And I collected it, don't tell anyone, a bit naughty, um, from a Karen village in Northern Thailand. Yeah, it was, it's actually quite a delicious fruit, but you needed to rub it between your hands to break it down before you could eat it. Before that, it was quite unpalatable. After that, it was very sweet. So I'm hoping that this will make it through and turn into a big tree one day because the village was quite high up and it was quite cold for Thailand. Like overnight, the temperatures would drop considerably. So there's a chance that this might one day set fruit and uh, yeah, we can try the technique again. I'm having to be careful with this one because it's got quite a few spines on it. Now this is a Mexican hawthorn, Cretaceous Mexicana. Yeah, it's meant to have a, an edible fruit that is used in Mexican cuisine. So I'm hoping that we get fruit on that one day. A little diorama called um, World Jewels and not sure what colour it will be. I sowed it from seed quite a few years ago. It's taking a long time to grow. Hopefully this will be the year it bulks up. Another one for the dead or dying. If they survive, I'll tell you what they are. Okay, this is a, another plant that I had growing in the house and kind of got sick of the sight of because it looked so sad. And it's a fern, Conlogram emelensis. And it's beautiful, variegated color to the leaves if they actually grow and you can see them. So yeah, I kind of had enough, put it in the greenhouse 
and yeah it's made it through just there's a tiny little bit of green on it there um yeah i'll bring this out and hopefully it will make it through mm, big old slug under there couple more dead or dying more and a bootylon here and um, again i grew this from seed so i'm really pleased that it's made it through a calistemon that's looking really good and an agapanthus called blue umbrella and that too is looking very happy and healthy another of the greeny eyes here and an agapanthus called black magic A salvia called blackcurrant sage and the reason being is the leaves smell just like um, blackcurrant leaves hmm. I always keep a couple of echium echium pininana in the greenhouse over winter because they're not reliable outside and I have lost the ones that I had outside this winter which is a real shame but I'll plant these out and hopefully they will turn into the mighty specimens that Echium pininana do become. This is a Korean bee tree and it's got the tiniest hint of life at the top there, which is great. A crinodendrum, it's a little bit brown around the edges, but it's survived. Now this plant is looking lovely. It's, well, I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a des desmodium i took it from a cutting from a plant that i had no idea what the plant was so yeah when it gets a bit bit bigger and flowers then hopefully i'll be able to identify it uh, this one is starting to get savaged by uh, slugs or snails because it's covered in slime a few different plants here another agni agni montana and again the leaves are very brittle and dry so uh not entirely sure about that one i think they'll go in the dead or dying pile as dying possibly and what else okay and this is a uh, a tree i uh, don't know what one it was from a seed that i collected and yeah hopefully it will grow into a great big happy tree tetradium Danielli. This might be the bee tree. The, uh, there's another one of those somewhere. Um, yeah, this one's a little bit in a happier state. Just giving them a little weed as I go along. Uh, this is a camellia and it's not looking happy. I think it's going into you know what pile. Okay, a uh, nice salvia here. Salvia microphylla. That's looking really healthy. Now it's hard to tell what's a weed and what's a plant here. Um, it was an Eugenia unifolia. Um, I think unfortunately it's mostly weed. Yep. Little die. This one is in a much better state. Ah, yeah, this is the Citrus Trifoliata. It's a supposedly hardy citrus, but I'm keeping it protected over winter while it's still small. Great plant, Melianthus major. Uh, definitely needs potting on to a larger pot, but uh, yeah, pleased that that's made it through. Another jujube. OK, 
Okay, we've got a few different things here. This is a Campsis radicans, and that's a climbing plant with lovely orange kind of trumpet-like flowers. So that's great, a bit weedy. Just clear those out. Oh, this is another of those bee trees. If I recall rightly, I think there was three that were growing within the single pot when I bought it and I split them up. So that was definite value for money. Cordeline, Torbay Red. Not sure if that one's looking too happy, but hopefully it will be okay. And what's this one? Oh, a Formian. And it's called Yellow Wave and it's got variegated leaves. This here is one of those wonder foods. You can make a tea from the leaves and you're meant to be able to live a long, long time if you do. But even if you don't, it's a very pretty plant. I'll probably cut it back a little bit and let the new growth come through. Oh, I didn't tell you what it was called. Um, that's because it's got one of those impossible to pronounce names. So I'm going to not even attempt it and just put a little label down there. Only a few more to go now. Um, I'm going to do this video in two parts. This part will be all the smaller pots and then the next part will be all the big plants I have in the back there. So here we have a Podocarpus macrophyllus, which is looking pretty good. And oh, Davidia involucrata, which is the han handkerchief tree, um, which I'm really pleased about. Um, again, it shouldn't really need to be overwintered in, in the greenhouse, it should do fine outside, but it's still quite small, so I want to look after it. And then a small little fig, which is called Little Miss Figgy. And um, yeah, it's very sweet. This fig does really well in pots. It doesn't get too large and is meant to fruit after a few years. So yeah, fingers crossed. Now these two are looking a bit sad, but I'm pretty sure there's life in this one. A good way to check is to use your fingernail and or thumbnail in this case and just scratch a little piece of the bark away and if you see green underneath it means it's alive and I can't see any green there <laughs> so yeah maybe it isn't no dead or dying pile this one appears to be dead, but if you look very closely, there's some signs of new growth appearing. And it is a Bauhinia unanensis, and that's another climbing plant. I've had it quite a few years. It was, um, I don't remember where it came from, actually. I think it was from a cutting. Oh, no, it's from a friend of mine who gave me some that she'd grown from seeds. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those plants that I just kind of, it never really does anything. It never seems very happy, even when it's in growth. But yeah, I'll persevere with it. Now this plant is one that has my favorite name, Hoheria sexy stylosa. Isn't that a great name? It's um, an evergreen plant and it will do outside. Again, just keeping it inside while it's small. Yeah, lovely. And now we've come to the final two. This one is a, a bulb and it has a white flower on it and a name that I can't pronounce. So there it is. And uh, yeah, hopefully that will grow well. It's survived the winter. That's the main thing. And then this one is an aconitum, a monkshood. And again, with a long name, Check it out there. And it's a great one because it's a bit unusual. It's a climbing monk's hood. And uh, yeah, really pleased that it's made it through the winter. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. So there'll be a second part to this video where, with all the big plants coming out. So if you've enjoyed finding out what I've kept in the greenhouse and what survived and what hasn't, please tune in for that. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.